This is a great outdoor laboratory. It really is. You can see all sorts of problems one can investigate. Every time I come up, I find something that I don't understand, and therefore I need to investigate it again. And this is an ideal place to look at uh, modern reefs as analogues of the fossil reefs because fossil reefs can be reservoirs for petroleum, for oil and gas all around the world and most geologists only see those as seismic records in geophysical surveys or as thin two inch cores from drill holes and here's an opportunity to see the whole spread of a reef. Well, I've got the sediment samples from the transects we took um, on the south beach. I'm going to take you in and show you the ovens. We've got all the grip sediment in there drying out. I'm Jessie Edwards and I'm doing a dual major in geology and biomedicine. I have a job with BHP and I'm based in Gunyella Riverside Mine. We're just sieving our sediments that we collected out in the field and then we'll probably look at them under the microscope and with the course you can just identify like the forams and all the different um, corals and then we'll just have a look at that and see where that fits in with our cross sections that we've been doing out in the field. <laughs> I work on sedimentology and, and paleoclimatic reconstruction. Corals are photo-obligates. They must grow close to sea level in the, the zone where light is able to penetrate because they have algae that live within them that help them to grow and they need to photosynthesize. So Kev, what's the best thing about geology? Shield work. Many of the organisms that live on coral reefs produce annually banded skeletons. So just like a tree ring, corals and bivalves lay down a layer of calcium carbonate and limestone every year in a continuous uh, sequence over up to many hundreds of years. And so if we can analyse the chemistry of those annual bands, that can tell us something about how the sea surface temperature changes over time, maybe how salinity changes over time, even other things like how much river input is coming onto uh, certain parts of the Great Barrier Reef. So they're tremendously useful as, as recorders of how climate has changed in the past. See this big sand bank here? I'll show you that on the map. This represents a pioneer community. First you usually get some grass uh, invading uh, the caves where the birds have dropped a bit of uh, fertiliser and some seeds. And then you get these small goosier plants. Does everyone know what pumice is? Huh? Is everyone doing geology? This K is made up of 100% calcium carbonate and the plants don't like that too much, some are adapted to it but this will add trace elements and it will add some silica. So all these things have, have their role in the development of the reef and the K. And that's what I want you to get, get across to you. You've got to think what's, yeah, that's basalt, but what's it mean? What's the significance of it? You keep your eyes open and ask why, and when you can't answer it, try and find out.